Hi, I'm Yo from Hand to Mind, and this is the fourth day of the seventh week for the third grade Teach at Home series. And today, we're gonna dig a little deeper into the idea of perimeters. I'm gonna give you some values, but not all. There's gonna be some missing values, and you're gonna have to use the old noggin to figure those out. So, let's have some fun, and let's get started. In today's lesson, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the concept of perimeter. Yesterday, we did a problem about Danny the ant taking a Sunday stroll around a welcome mat. And we wanted to know how far did Danny the ant have to walk to get around the mat. So we calculated 24 inches going the first leg, 16 inches going the second leg. Since they had to go the same distance to get back to this point as this, well, it's 24 inches going back. And then, well, same thing, 16 inches going that way, right? So 24 inches in the first leg, 16 inches in the second leg, 24 more inches in the third, and 16 in the fourth leg came together to be 80 inches. And we found out that that total amount of distance that Danny had to walk was called the perimeter. The perimeter was how far Danny had to walk to get around the entire edge of the mat. We also use what is called the commutative properties to rearrange our numbers, our terms, right? So instead of doing 24 plus 16 plus 24 plus 16, we found out that the same thing is if you can get the same value if you do 24 plus 24 and then 16 plus 16. Same thing, it just looks different. It's easier to read, easier to work with, at least for me and maybe for you too. So now we have a new problem. I gave you not a welcome mat, but just a grid, a rectangle with a grid in it. So now you can see the amount of units. And I asked you to tell me what the perimeter is. But first, what is the length and width? So first we found the length. And remember, the length can be either one. It can be top to bottom, or it can be sideways. It doesn't matter. But for consistency, the way I'm teaching it, I'm doing it from left to right. That's our length. Okay, and here, if you count the units, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you get eight units as the length. Same thing, you get three units as the width. So then to find the perimeter, remember, if this is eight units, then the bottom side is also eight units. If this is three units, then the right side is also three units. So you do the eight units here, plus the eight units here, which you see here. And then you do the three units here, plus the three units here, which you see in this part. And if you add all of them together, your perimeter is 24 inches. Okay, so that is the perimeter of this grid. Now, we have another one. And this time I didn't give you the grid. I just gave you the rectangle and I told you the units but nothing changes. The concepts and the ideas are all the same. So the length is up top, nine units. The width is on the side, five units. To get the perimeter, what do you do? You add up nine units here plus nine units here, five units here plus five units here, and you just do the math to get 28 units total. Great. So. Now that I've given you several shapes, what if I don't give you a shape? What if I just give you some units and then you need to draw the shape? So for instance, here's a rectangle with eight units in length and six units, six units in width. So what I want you to do is first fill in any blanks and then draw the rectangle. So if we have eight units in length and we have the length on top and bottom, there's going to be two terms with eight units, and since we have the width of six units, there's gonna be two terms of six units. Here we go, top, bottom, left, right, and then in total, we get 28 units. Awesome. Okay, now we need to draw a shape. Well, here we go. I drew a shape with about eight units on the top and six units on the bottom. And remember, this is very important. When you're drawing shapes, for you to really understand what you're working with, you should draw your shapes accurately, okay? So if this is six units, and then you want the length to be eight units, is the eight unit length supposed to be longer or shorter than the sixth unit width? Well, eight is bigger than six, so eight should be longer. How much longer? Well, six is most of eight, so, it shouldn't be a lot bigger than six, 
So I think this looks about right. If you had something like this, would that look right? Probably not, right? The eight unit length is far shorter than the six unit width. That doesn't make any sense. Nope. If you are doing this, you should be able to theoretically put a grid inside of it and be able to count eight units on the length, six units on the width. Now, I don't want you writing the grid every time because it's going to take you forever. But it's good to just get in the practice of doing your best so that if you were to put a grid over it, you wouldn't be too far off. Okay? Great. Now, sometimes I'm going to give you problems that are a little bit harder. I'm going to give you a perimeter, and then maybe I'll give you a length and a width, but you won't get both of them. So now you have to put your head together to think about how am I going to solve this one. Well, let's not wait. Let's just get to it. So we know that we have a length of four units, right? And whenever you're doing four units, I usually do two of those, right? Because you have on the top and you have on the bottom, right? And we know that the perimeter is going to be 12 units at the very end. So now we just put our missing values in here. We know that the width is going to be blank units. We don't know how many. And we know that there's going to be two of those widths in there, right? But there's two missing values. That's really hard to figure out, right? I can make this a little easier. What if instead of two missing values, we just make it one missing value? Maybe then it can be a little bit easier. What I did is I just added the four units and the four units together for the length and the other side, right? And now all we have to do is figure out what this is, and then this is the width plus the other width, right? One side versus the other side. So we do something which you're going to learn later on down the road. You're a little young for this, but it's something called algebra. And algebra is a very important tool for figuring out missing values. And we don't want to get too into it, but let's, let's just do the very basics here, okay? And the way I'm going to ask you to solve this one is by saying a sentence, okay? And the sentence is when you have a blank, you can just use the word what. So follow along here. 8 plus what equals 12? 8 plus what equals 12? What do you have to add to 8 to get 12? Well, I know my math facts pretty well, and so I know that 8 plus something equals 12, and that something is 4. There it is. 8 units plus 4 units equals to 12 units altogether. Awesome. Now, we have one more step before we can figure out the width. Now remember, we had to add the length on the top and the bottom together to get eight units. So now we know that the width on the left and the right is four units. So that means that this is both this plus this. What happens if you take this four units and you cut it in half? What do you get for each one? If you take four and you cut it in half, you got two units. Perfect. So now we have our width. So we can create a rectangle with a length of four and a width of two units. And just to make sure, it's always good to go back and count. And just to make sure, you want to count. So you want to say, what's four plus four? Eight plus two more. Ten plus two more. Twelve. 12 units. You got it right. Well done. Perfect. All right, so now let's do another one. Now we're missing the length. We have a width of 7 units and a perimeter of 22 units. We're going to do the same thing we did before. So we're going to set up our equation here. And we know that we don't know our, le our length, so we're just going to leave those blank, but we do know our width. We have two widths, and we have a perimeter of 22 units. Same thing we did before. We're going to go ahead and combine our widths and combine our lengths. So we're going to get blank units plus 14 units to get 22 units in total for the perimeter. And remember, we can replace the blank with the word what. What plus 14 is 22. What do you have to add to 14 to get 22? Huh, that's a hard one. Well, sometimes when you're dealing with really big numbers, I like to use a number line. 
That's one of my favorite tools. So you can draw one of these out on a piece of paper. You can print a number line out and just use um, a pencil on it or print a bunch and use a pen or you can put in a plastic sleeve and use a dry erase marker. There are many ways to use a number line, but they are so cool and helpful to have around. So what I'll do is I'll start my 14 units and I wanna know what do I need to add to 14 to get to 22. Now you can use some methods and tools. For instance, I sometimes like to jump from 14 to 20 because I know that's six, and then to get from 20 to 22, that's two more, so eight, right? That's the answer. The other one is you can just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Either way, you know that you have to add eight to 14 in order to get 22, so there we go. Now remember last time, this unit, of this, this value for eight units is going to be the length plus the other side, which is the same as the length, right? So what is half of eight? If you take eight and divide it into two equal pieces, you get four. There we go. And just to make sure, it's always good to calculate. Add these up. Make sure you got it right. So four plus four is eight plus seven plus seven is 14. So eight plus 14 is 22. Perfect. We got it. So from there, we just need to draw our shape. Seven units as the width, four units as the length. It looks proportional, meaning the four is a good size compared to the seven. So we got it. Let's do one more. We have a length of nine units. We don't know the width and we have a perimeter of eight, 28 units. Same thing as before, we set it up. We have two blanks for the width and we combine it to get the 18 units for the length plus the length. We don't know the, the width plus the width, but we know that the perimeter is 28 and I already got my number line set up. So if we ask that question where we replace the blank with what, we get 18 plus what equals 28. 18 plus what? What do you need to add to 18 to get 28? Well, we can use the number line. So I'm gonna circle this 18 and I'm gonna ask myself on the number line, how far do I have to go to get to the 28? You can use the same methods, right? You can use the counting one by one. You can go from 18 to 20, which is two, and then 20 to eight, 28, which is another eight, so that's two plus eight, which is 10. Or if you have a hundreds chart, you can, you'll see, which I don't have here, but you can, if you can imagine a hundreds chart, the 18, where's the 28 in relation to the 18? It's right below it, right? And if you're going right below, what do you have to add in a hundreds chart? 10, right? So we know that in order to get from 18 to 28, we add 10, okay? So now what we have to do is remember that this is the width on the left plus the width on the right. So we have to figure out what is it just to make the width, right? So 10, if you take that and divide it evenly in two, you get five, right? And to be sure, why don't we go ahead and add these up? Nine plus nine is 18. Five plus five is 10. 18 plus 10, 28. Great, we got it. So now, last thing we have to do, draw it in. We make that rectangle. We make it proportional. The five needs to be proportional to the nine. I know that five is a little more than half of nine, so this length has to be a little more than half of this. And there we go. Thank you so much for joining us and exploring more uh, into getting deeper into perimeters. A fun concept, yes. So for more resources, please visit handtomineathome.com, and I'll look forward to seeing you in future lessons. Have a good one.